Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today we will look at another great argument made by Dan Gibson In the coming clip Dan is going to explain why Islamic sources say that Muslims prayed towards Jerusalem when in fact they prayed towards Petra Let's go and watch Every good Muslim tells me that Muslims used to pray towards Jerusalem They know this because Bukhari tells them this. And I agree, Bukhari says it was Jerusalem. But Bukhari is writing some 200 years after Muhammad, and he's writing more than 100 years after the Qibla change took place. So he's not an eyewitness. He's just collecting what people are remembering. And he actually notes several conflicting ideas that were circulating at the time. While some people were offering morning prayer at Quba, a man came to them and said, a Quranic order has been revealed to Allah's apostle tonight that he should face the Kaaba at Mecca. So you too should turn your faces towards it. At that moment, the faces were towards Syria. And on hearing this, they turned towards the Kaaba at Mecca. I believe that originally Muhammad, while living in Medina, prayed north towards Petra, which was in the Roman province of Syria. By the time Bukhari was collecting his stories, people had forgotten Petra and everyone remembered that their great-grandparents prayed towards So the argument is as follows. Muslims have been thinking that Prophet Muhammad prayed towards Jerusalem because they read that in Bukhari and Bukhari wrote his collections of hadith 100 years after the Qibla changed. By that time people had forgotten about Petra so basically, 100 years after the Qibla changed, Bukhari went and asked people who were living at that time, and most of those people had forgotten about Petra. And they remember that their Roman grand-grandparents prayed towards Syria. Cool story, isn't it? Let's first ignore the fact that most of Dan Gibson's so-called evidences were taken from Bukhari which was according to him not a very reliable source because it had been collected 200 years after the foundation of Islam and 100 years after the Qibla has changed so let's ignore that for now and let me deal with the argument that Muslims know this because Bukhari told them the question we need to ask is do we have anyone before Bukhari who told us about the Qibla change from Jerusalem to Mecca? The answer is yes. We have Imam Malik ibn Anas, who was born in the year 93 Hijrah, 20 years after the death of Abdullah ibn Zubair. And Imam Malik has a very famous collection of hadith. It's called Muatta Malik. And in it, there is a whole chapter of Qibla. This is one of the hadith that we found in Muatta Malik, which says that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, prayed towards Jerusalem. Now, the second question we need to ask is this. Did Imam Malik live at a time where people allegedly forgotten about the change of Qibla? Can Dan Gibson use the same argument he used for Bukhari with Imam Malik? Could he say, for example, that when Imam Malik ibn Anas wrote his collection of hadith, people had already forgotten about Petra? And to answer that question, we need to go to Dan Gibson's YouTube documentary to get when was the Qibla changed according to Dan Gibson. Let's go there. Eventually, Ibn Zubair lost the battle, but the cause was taken up by those in the city of Medina in Saudi Arabia and by the city of Kufa in Iraq. I believe that during this time, the Islamic world was thrown into contention. Should they pray towards Petra or should they pray towards Mecca? The great Islamic empire had divided into two. Originally, the Umayyads ruled from Damascus and they prayed towards Petra. But they were defeated in battle, and now the eastern part of the empire was ruled by the Abbasids, who all constructed their mosques facing towards Mecca. It was during this exact time that we see a change in mosque construction. 
Before this, every new mosque constructed faced Petra. But now for the first time, some of the new mosques began to face Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So according to Dan, the Qibla change took place when the Abbasids defeated the Umayyads. And the Abbasids defeated the Umayyads in the year 750 AD. So now we know the exact date of the change of the Qibla. It was the year 750 when the Abbasids defeated the Umayyads. Let's check how far this date was from Imam Malik ibn Anas. Was Imam Malik, like Bukhari, writing his collection of books a hundred years after the Qibla changed, when all people around him had already forgotten about the Qibla change? Well, actually, Imam Malik was born in the year 711 AD. So when the Abbasids defeated the Umayyads, Imam Malik was already 39 years old. If there was any change of Qibla in 750 AD, then Imam Malik would have known about it, right? Because he was already 39 years old, let alone the people around him. Because surely Imam Malik met many people around him who were much elder than him, who were born during the time of Abdullah ibn Zubair. Some of them were born even during the time of the first four caliph of Islam. For example, Imam Malik heard this hadith from Yahya ibn Sa'id, who was born during the caliphate of Ibn Zubair. Ibn Zubair died in the year 73 Hijra. Yahya ibn Sa'id was born before the year 70. So if there was any change of Qibla in 750, Yahya ibn Sa'id would know about it and would definitely remember it. So, sorry Mr. Gibson, you cannot use this ridiculous argument of Muslims think that Prophet Muhammad prayed towards Jerusalem because Bukhari told them and Bukhari was writing a hundred years after the Qibla change when people had already forgotten about Petra. The more you try to explain this stupid theory, you make it very easy for us to destroy it. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.